Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host here on the site to teach you how to play all kinds of stuff. But today is a guitar lesson. We're going to have a lot of fun. Now, before I let you hear and see what we're going to be working on today, I want to give just a little bit of an explanation. You know, whenever we're starting to play and we're starting to put together solos and learning how to improvise, we think in terms of licks. And I think that's a good thing. I teach lots of licks. My head's full of G-licks and C-licks and D-licks. And the way that we think about it at first is, well, I have a measure of G here, so I need to have a one measure G lick to place in there. And I have two measures of C here, so I need two uh, measures of C licks to place in here. And that's great. But eventually, we need to start thinking about the bigger picture. We need to start thinking about in terms of phrases and telling a story and realizing that we don't have to abide by those measured walls, okay? We don't have to only play G licks over G chords and only C licks over C chords. And I want to let you listen to that. Let's have a little ear training exercise here. I'm going to play through a 16 measure progression three times in a row. And it's really simple to keep up with. It's four measures of G to four measures of C to four measures of D and back to four measures of G. And then I'll repeat it two more times. The first time I go through it, I'm just going to play four G lick, one measure G licks over the four measures of G. And then the same for C, D and back to G. But the second time we go through, I'm going to shift. I'm going to shift ahead and I'm going to play a C lick over one of the G measures and also over the D and G. Then the third time through, I'm gonna push ahead another measure so that we're two measures ahead. Now these are the same licks. I'm just pushing them ahead and I want you to listen and think, can I hear that? And more importantly, have I heard that done before? Y'all take a listen. What did you think about that? Pretty cool, huh? Hopefully you heard it. You heard how those different licks sound over different chords that maybe you're expecting to hear them by. I remember when I was in college and I was taking banjo from Alan Mundy, he would pull me into his office. He would say, grab the guitar. I'm going to play a banjo song. I'd say, what are the chords? He says, I'll tell you. But he would do that through playing. He would lead me along and help my ear hear to what chords he's going to. And he was telling a story. We need to start telling a story with our solos or at least begin thinking about it. Now, what's the point here today with this lesson? It's, it's not, the point is not to learn all these licks. Of course, you've got a lot of licks here that you can learn, that's fine. But the point is to see when you are where you can use these licks and where you can use the licks that you already know, maybe in places that you wouldn't think to use them, maybe over different chords. But more importantly, the second point is to know why you can do that. Why can you play C licks over G chords? Why can you play D licks over C? And all of those various questions, all right? Let's, let's start telling a story with our solos. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website, banjobeanclark.com. You can join as a GoPick member, have access to hundreds of lessons like this one. If you're already watching here on the site, scroll down for the next video segment, and don't forget to download the tabs for what you just heard, as well as the Rhythm Track MP3s. Hey y'all, what if I told you that I could take the licks that you know right now, and I could make you a more interesting and complex soloist with those very same licks. I can. And even if you don't know any licks right now, I can give you some very basic licks and then make you a more interesting player. Now, I want to give you 16 bluegrass licks. They're all one measure each. They're not that difficult. You don't have to memorize them, but they're just going to serve as fodder or as subject material for what we're going to learn today. Let's check them out here on the sheet. The first four you see there are what are considered G licks. So our progression has four measures of G chord. And I'm giving you four G licks to play over that. Sounds like this. Okay, now what 
makes those G licks? You might say, what, what makes those G licks? And, and that's a great question because I would say that there are some licks that are more G than others. And very simply, the reason why is if they contain the major third in the lick. And that's what we'll see today. Whenever I'm calling G licks G and C licks C and D licks D licks, it's because it contains that major third. And without getting too much into the theory, whenever you play through a scale, if we play through a G major scale, we can number the tones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one. And what's very special about that third tone is that the other major chords, mother major diatonic chords contained in that key, they don't contain that note, okay? So this B note here is not contained in a C chord. Uh, this B note is not contained in a D chord. So whenever you play that note, it kind of screams, this is a G lick. The same thing happens with C and D chords too. If we were to play through our C major scale, one, two, three, there's that E note. It's not contained in a D chord and it's not contained in a G chord. Same thing for D. One, one, two, three, that F sharp, it's not contained in a G chord, and it's not contained in a C chord. So whenever we play those major thirds, and we might use the minor third and rocking into them, sliding into them, that screams that that's the chord lick that we're playing. So I wanted to do that on purpose because I want these to be very specific licks and to sound like G licks. Again, as we look at them, you can see that I have that major third in each one of them. Here in the first one, we're gonna slide up into it. There it is. So that is a, definitely a G lick. Again, in measure uh, four there, it says G number two. We're going to have that major third. Again, G licks don't have to have the major third. I'm just doing it here so that it's very, very obvious. G lick number three sounds like this. There's that major third. And then measure four, or G lick number four, starts off sliding into that major third. Cool. So you might just want to pause the video practice running through those. They kind of flow together, and I wrote them like that on purpose. As we look at the C chords, we're going to do the same thing. Where's that major third over the C? Right here or right here. And we're going to start off C number one by hammering into it. Measure two, we're going to play like a regular old C run, right? Hammer into that major third. C lick number three. And C lit number four. So all of them accent and are, sur are surrounding that major third tone. Again, I'm just doing that to make it really, really sound like a C lick so that whenever we start pushing things around, we have clear colors to see. Let's look at the D lick. Same thing here. What would that D major third be? Well, if we start on the D note, we count up to three. One, two, three. This is F sharp right here. Or down here, and every one of these licks is going to have that note accented. D lick number one. D lick number two. D lick number three. And D lick number four. Or a hammer. Okay, then we're going to come back around to four more measures of G, and these are a little bit different licks, but again, we're going to accent that B note. G lick number five sounds like this. G lick number six. G lick number seven. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to play through all of those slowly, through the whole progression. And I want you to get a feel for what it sounds and feels like to play four very obvious G licks over four measures of G chord. Four very obvious C licks over four measures of C. Four very obvious D licks over four measures of D. And then we're going to start moving it around. And what we're going to do is we're going to start shifting the measures around so that we, on the lead, arrive at the C chord before the rhythm does and arrive at the D chord before the rhythm does. And what does that sound like? What does that do? And it's, I think it's going to really unlock your ears and unlock your fingers to begin telling more of a story, begin leading your audience to where you're going to go. Give them hints about where the song's taking you next. And that's ultimately what's going to make you more of a tasty and interesting and complex player. If you're watching somewhere else besides the website, we have a lot to cover. Come on over to banjobeanclark.com. I'd be honored to have you on board as a Gold Pick member. Mm -hmm.